I will call the Common Council meeting to order for the fifth regular meeting. Will the clerk please uh, say the quote of the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Communication works for those who work at it. All right. Would you call the roll as well? Alderperson Ackley. Here. Alderperson Bourne. Here. Alderperson Decker. Here. Alderperson Feldy. Here. Alderperson Felicki Paneski. Here. Alderperson Laster. Here. Alderperson Mitchell. Excused. Alderperson Perella. Here. Alderperson Salazar. Here. Alderperson Savaglio. Present. There are nine present. All right. For everyone in attendance, would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from a previous meeting? I move to approve. Second. There's been a motion second. Any further discussion on the minutes from our previous meeting? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Minutes are approved. Anyone for public forum today, clerk? There is no one. All right. Um, 5.1, uh, mayor appointments, various city attorney. Oh, sorry. To come up. The mayor has the following appointments for your consideration uh, to the Board of Marina Parks and Forestry Commissioners, uh, Marilyn Montemayor as the Plan Commission Representative, to the Joint Review Board, Mayor Ryan Sorensen as the City Representative, Mark Belke as the Representative from the School District, Roy Cluse from Lakeshore Technical College, Roger Testrudy, County Representative, Roberta Felicki Paneski, Public Representative. To the Library Board, Andre Walton, to the Mayor's International Committee, Tony Romer, Deidre Martinez, Peter Jansen, Deb Sable-Williams, Dana Elmson, and Nick Laurie. All right, those will lay over. Uh, 6.1, confirmation of Mayor's appointments. City Attorney. Submitting the following appointments for your consideration to the Zoning Board of Appeals, Nancy Maring, to the Housing Rehab Loan Commission, Andre Walton, to the Board of Marina Parks and Forestry Commissioners, John Kaler, Rebecca Clark, Marge Mattern, to the Board of Review, Kathleen Donovan, to the Historic Preservation Commission, Carolyn Lee, to the Mayor's International Committee, Carolyn Miesfeld, Rich Miesfeld, Dane Schaefer, and to the Sheboygan Transit Commission, Alderperson Trey Mitchell, Alderperson Barb Feldy, Alderperson Dean Decker. All right, is there a motion to confirm those appointments? I move to confirm. Second. There's been a motion second. This is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. All right. 7.1, confirmation of mayor's appointments. Uh, city attorney. Mayor submitted the following appointment for your consideration. Uh, Alder person Leslie Laster, District 8, to be considered for appointment to the licensing hearings and public safety committee to fill the unexpired term of Ryan Sorensen, whose term expires April 18, 2022. I move to confirm. Second. Motion second. This is, again, a roll call, uh, roll call vote. Eight ayes, one abstain. All right, that's approved. All right, uh, 1.8 um, is a presentation by our Senior Services Director, Emily Rendell Arajo. Um, so Emily, come on down. Thank you, Mayor Sorensen. Thank you for pronouncing my name so well. No one gets it that well. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm here this evening to share with you our new brand for the Senior Activity Center of Sheboygan. A few months ago, um, some members of the Senior Services Commission and the Friends of the Senior Activity Center started the process of going through a formal rebrand, um, but this conversation has been going on for five plus years probably. Our own Alder person Feliki Paneski conducted some focus groups five years ago that identified that 
our membership was not happy with the name Senior Activity Center of Sheboygan, often abbreviated to SACS. They also don't enjoy being called seniors. Um, some other issues with the existing name of Senior Activity Center of Sheboygan were that where there's a lot of confusion with other organizations in town. Um, nursing homes, rehab facilities, most specifically Sheboygan Senior Community out on Highway Y, for which we receive calls about once a week and they receive calls for us about once a week. So our goals when setting out on determining a new name and new brand to go along with our new building on North 8th Street was that we would have a unique, um, a unique name that would not be confused with any other organization and would accurately reflect the population that we serve, which are uh, adults 55 plus, um, that are independent and active and still have a lot of life left to serve this community. So our new name, um, members of the Friends and the Commission worked together with Dynamic Agency um, through the rebrand process. The Friends of the Senior Activity Center are paying for this uh, $25,000 um, to include the name, the logo, and a new website. And um, Scott, if you want to pull up our new name. So the name that we agreed on and was voted and approved on by the Friends and the Commission last month is Uptown Social with the tagline, Sheboygan's Hub for Active Seniors. So if we look at the next slide, we'll see the new logo. Um, we're very excited. We think this accurately reflects the population that we're serving. Um, the seniors that have been involved in the process feel strongly about the name. They're very excited to not have to come to the SACs. Um, <laughs> and we're also excited with uh, the possibility of abbreviation. Uh, Uptown Social abbreviates to us, and so we plan to have a lot of fun with our marketing terms. Um, using us and Uptown Social. And so our intent is later this month, we will be sharing this information at the annual meeting of the Friends of the Senior Activity Center and um, going from there as we prepare for our new building. Um, I know you have a lot on your agenda, so if anyone wants to follow up with me separately, I'm always available and I brought a giveaway for everyone. Any other questions for Emily at all? Thank you. All right, thank you, Emily. All right, now we'll do uh, 1.9 mayor's announcements. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here uh, this uh, Monday evening. I'm gonna keep it relatively quick because uh, we do have a a long day and we've got a long agenda. So I'm just gonna jump right into it um, do some proclamations. So this is the fun part. All right, so first one, um, I'll, I'll read both of them out to you. Um, first proclamation, whereas President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863, declaring the slaves in the Confederate territory officially free, paving the way for the passing of the 13th Amendment, which formally abolished slavery in the United States of America. And whereas word about getting the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation was delayed by some two and a half years to June 19th, 1865 in reaching authorities and African Americans in the South and Southwest in the United States. And whereas on June 19th has been a special meeting to the African American community and is officially called Juneteenth, combining the words of June and 19th, and is the oldest known public celebration of the end of slavery in the United States. And whereas Juneteenth commemorates African American freedom and celebrates the success gained through education and greater opportunity, and whereas on a larger scale celebration of Juneteenth reminds each and every one of us um, the promise of freedom, equality, and opportunity are at the core of the American dream. Now, therefore, I, Ryan Sorensen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim June 19th, 2021 as Juneteenth Day. Um, and I would uh, present this proclamation to Pastor Michael Thomas, um, and as well as other members of the Black American Community Outreach. So if you want to come on up. Uh, 
present you this proclamation on behalf of the city. And if you'd like to say a few words. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, as the president of the Black American Community Outreach, I would like to say uh, thank you to uh, Mayor Ryan, uh, to the City Common Council. Um, you know, uh, lots of people say that uh, they care and they say that they should support. And then there are those who actually show that they care and show that they support. And I think that this is a great show. Um, and so uh, we at the Black American Community Outreach are gonna do our best to continue to uplift the entire community in which we live in. And I hope that you all will come out on June 19th and celebrate Juneteenth Day with us. Uh, thank you very much. God bless you all. Next one. Whereas Sheboygan County, the city of Sheboygan is a community full of diversity, and whereas the city of Sheboygan recognizes the importance of equality and freedom, and whereas we as a nation have come a long way since the Stonewall Riots in 1969, and whereas the movement towards equal rights for lesbians, gays, bisexuals, transgender people still carry on with so much more progress to be made, and whereas everybody should be able to live free without fear of prejudice, discrimination, violence or hatred based on who they are as a person, and whereas the city of Sheboygan is dedicated to, to fostering a community of acceptance regardless of one's sexual orientation or gender identity, and whereas June is celebrated as LGBTQ plus Pride Month all over the globe, and now therefore I, Ryan Sorensen, mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim June 2021 as LGBTQ plus Pride Month. And I will pro uh, present this proclamation to the Sheboygan County um, LGBTQ Alliance. So Carolyn, come on up and other members of the Alliance come on up as well. Thank you. Mayor, thank you so much. The Sheboygan County LGBTQ Alliance exists to raise awareness of the diversity of the LGBTQ community address the needs of our queer residents, build solidarity and allyship, and support action for intersectional justice. We envision a community that is welcoming, safe, and informed. Two days ago, the Alliance hosted Sheboygan's second annual Pride celebration, virtually this year, and we heard personal stories and messages from a series of local LGBTQ residents. I hope many of you were able to tune in, but if you weren't, you can find the recording on our Facebook page. One of the major projects of the Sheboygan County LGBTQ Alliance is working on is organizing a comprehensive LGBTQ resource guide, that, something that has never been done in Sheboygan County. And in addition to that, we're focused on outreach to employers, educators, healthcare providers, and community leaders so that we can be more responsive and proactive in addressing the needs of our community. We're really excited about what's to come, and though we're still an all-volunteer, community-based organization, we want to evolve into the go-to local resource for LGBTQ community members and our allies. I'll just close by saying progress can often seem slow or difficult to measure, but it means something to have formal public support of the queer community at the city leadership level. I can tell you, having been privileged to be the officiant of the first legal same-sex marriage in Sheboygan County seven years ago this week, and also now to have the honor to represent the Sheboygan County LGBTQ Alliance as its chair, tonight re represents progress. And here tonight with me are Jamie Lammers and Kate Krause, two of the co-founders of the Sheboygan County LGBTQ Alliance. And I know that each of us has experienced real setbacks and discrimination as members of the local queer community. This won't be the last time you'll see the Alliance in these chambers as we continue to push for full equality for the LGBTQ community in Sheboygan. And so while there's still a lot of work to do, we're really pleased to join you tonight to celebrate progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again. Thanks everyone.
and for folks, you don't have to stay for, for this part too, so you're excused, <laughs> unless you want to stay. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll jump right on to the consent agenda. Uh, 2.1, um, is there a motion to receive and file all ROs and receive all RCs and adopt the resolutions? President I move Felton. to receive all and file all ROs, receive all RCs and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. There's been a motion second. Any discussion on the consent agenda? I have one. Uh, go ahead, Roberta. I would like to uh, have an explanation for 2.2. We are being asked to authorize licensing, and I read the document, and the licenses have already been granted. Can we know why? You're not, you're not being asked to authorize them. They are being reported to you uh, as is required by ordinance. So what you're doing is receiving the document and as as it's been as the licenses have been granted perfect thank you any other discussion on any items from the consent agenda all right this is a roll call vote so please uh check your board docs oh, yeah. i'm asleep well i i keep it keeps going out okay Thank you. Nine eyes. All right. Board of Officers 3.1, RO number 21, 21, 22 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred resolution number 9-21-22 by Elder Persons Mitchell and Perella approving the capital improvements program as recommended by the Capital Improvements Commission for the program period from 2022 to 2026 in adopting the program imp for implementation, which is to report that this matter was discussed at, a, at the regular meeting of the City Planning Commission on April 25th, 2021, and after due consideration recommends adopting the resolution. Uh, Older person Perella? Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Motion, motion and second. Any further discussion? Older person Boren? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor Wolf, uh, could you uh, tell us? Uh, I believe it's going to be about $3.1 million in capital improvements and what the breakdown is going to be between borrowing and fund balance. Thank you, Alder Bourne. Um, with this, uh, this upcoming program and capital improvements, we are looking to, per to borrow uh, two million in geo bonding, and we are looking to uh, utilize one million forty-five thousand in uh, general, uh, general, general uh, funding. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from Alders? Okay. City Administrator, any additional comments on this item? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I guess what I would like to, uh, to bring forward is that this program, which is quite different than what we've presented in past uh, for those of us that have been through capital improvements, uh, to me, this was a very streamlined process for 2022. It also keeps us within the guidelines that I've brought forward to the council where we need to uh, con <coughs> continuously review the amount of debt that we, we incur in the future years. We need to start utilizing some of our uh, general fund balance and being uh, better stewards in, in our borrowing, borrowing practices. So this takes advantage of all of that. It keeps us within uh, $2 million borrowing, and it also is utilizing a $1,045,000 of general fund. And please understand that from 2020, uh, we rolled over uh, in excess of a $1,200,000 plus dollars in round numbers. So really this is net neutral from that perspective. We're not actually pulling out of the pool. We're actually just using um, uh, $1,045,000 of the rollover. Thank you. 
Any additional questions on this item? This is a roll call vote then. Nine eyes. All right, uh, items 3.2 through 3.6 will be referred to various committees. Uh, 4.1 through 4.7 will additionally be referred to committees as well. Reports of committees, 5.1 RC number 3521-22 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 10-21-22 by Elder Persons Mitchell and Flicky Paneski authorizing a budget adjustment for the appropriations in the 2021 budget regarding the My Civic Citizen Engagement System software system and recommends adopting the resolution. Older person Flicky Paneski. I move that we adopt the resolution. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this item? Any comments from the city administrator on this item? Thank you, Mayor. I just want to thank everybody for the support on this My, My Civic. My Civic is going to be a, a great addition to the uh, to our city. It'll basically give us an, an app where we will a, will be able to actually communicate outwards and our constituents will be able to communicate better inwards within to the city. So it's not just a 311 where people can um, basically report a pothole because that never happens or other issues within the city. It's more of the fact that we can push information out to the constituents, but it's also going to be a hub as you get, as we've all um, been uh, presented where we'll be able to actually have, you know, the, the city's uh, website um, connection, we'll be able to have DPW. Uh, in the future, we're hoping to be able to get our, our, um, our restaurants and our downtown district to actually have um, a link in there where they can click on it and it'll take them to the many wonderful restaurants that we have within our community and other features. So this is, this is the beginning. It's also going to be able to assist us in our upcoming strategic plan in communicating with our constituents. So thank you for your support. Any additional comments? Seeing none, uh, this is a roll call vote. Nice. All right. 5.2 RC number 362122 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee to whom was referred General Ordinance number 3-21-22 by Older Persons Feldy, Ackley, and Decker amending the Municipal Code so as to temporarily reduce fees for sidewalk cafes and recommends adopting the ordinance. Older Person Feldy? I move to receive the RC and adopt the ordinance. Second. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. All right, that is approved. Uh, items 6.1 through 6.6 .6 will be referred to various committees. 7.1, other matters authorized by law, city attorney. 7.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2021, April 14, 2022, June 30, 2022, and June 30, 2023. All right, and that will be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety committee. All right, number eight, we have a contemplated closed session. Um, Alder Person Feldy. I move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 
1E, Wisconsin stat status for the purpose of discussion related to a possible development incentive regarding the former Shopco store located at 518 South Taylor Drive where competitive and bargaining sessions require closed session. And under the exemption provided in section 19.851G, Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of discussion related to possible litigation related to the termination of one or more city employees where legal counsel will render oral advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is likely to become involved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all right, there's been a motion and second. This is a roll call vote to convene in closed session. Nine eyes. All right, we are, we'll convene in closed session in about two minutes then. So everyone from the public, please, we will not be coming back into open session, so this will conclude our meeting for the day. Do we want to meet in here or in the... I mean, we can meet in... Stay. <laughs>